So I'm saying like, it's crazy how like a civilization, how a civilization is so advanced can end up destroying themselves. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You, you, um, cause that's not how people are supposed to live in the most natural way. You know what I mean? You know, and then you get dependent on that kind of stuff and then, you know, it kind of takes you away from, kind of takes you away from your, your prime being, you know, because you don't need all that stuff to live. I don't know. It's, and I think we are, we, we say that, but then we, you know, we're kind of guilty as well, you know? So it's a, it is like a love hate relationship. It's, it's hard, but when, once they introduce it to you, it's hard not to live with it. It's hard to live without it. You know what I mean? Yeah, like um, I said, like now, like kids, like babies, they growing up with iPhones and iPads in their hands. Whereas when we grew up, we had the like, action figures and Hot Wheels. Yep. Yeah, wrestling. I remember all that. We played. We actually played outside. Yeah, dog. Yeah, which is, you know, people don't do that no more. And I remember I got my first cell phone. I think I was fourteen. 13 or 14, I was 13, and it was a flip phone, and I had nothing on it. it I just used it to say, Mom, can you pick me up from the mall? That's it. <laughs> it was no nothing extra, no apps. It was nothing. Yeah, yo, I, I had my first cell phone at 10 years old. It was like, like the, the Motorola joint. You, you remember that? Do, do, do. Hello. Oh, yeah. Hello. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like. Uh, this was when I was in Florida. So yeah, I spent I spent a year in Florida. This was in 05. And at that time, all I did was ride my bike, play football outside, then come to the crib and like play video games. But but at least you no, know, we was constantly you no know, connected with people exactly. talking. Whereas now, only like I got a brother, like he's he's um in the generation Z. Like he be talking to his friends, but it's all through Xbox, all through the mic. So they don't really see each other when they be talking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's over time that that's not good. That's I don't think it's good. It uh, weakens your social skills. Being able to talk to people and look them in the eye and stuff like that. You know, it's it's kind of a bailout, but you know, that's all they know. So I can't be mad at like my little cousin and them. So Nah, no, nah, most definitely. But, but um, like something that I've learned that's super, which is probably beneficial for a lot of people who are so um glued to their, to their phones, to their laptops is like take a day to just unplug. Don't look at your phone. Don't look at your laptop. Don't look at social media. Just be. You know what I mean? Like be outside, be in nature. Like it, like for for. I don't know what it is, but when you unplug from social media technology, like it gives it gives your brain to reset. Because what's the first thing most people do when they wake up? Grab their phone. And when they grab their phone, they're looking at social media. And since that's the first thing that's on your mind, and you react into a friend or somebody you don't like in a visa, you feel some type of way. So now that just set the tone for your yeah. entire yeah. day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, agreed. And it starts in the home, man. I think when the kids are young, you definitely got to start when they're young because once they get used to it, it's no telling them nothing. and You can't keep that away from them. So you get, it has to start young. But also there has to be some sort of control, you know. You have to be disciplined and set a schedule for yourself. A routine is important, you know. No matter if it's like you, you just have like – the, the morning is like, I'm going to meditate, I'm going to read, boom. And then you build from there. It doesn't have to be so, so um, like, military based. Like, like, where the whole day is just, we're doing this at 0700 or whatever. But, yeah, you got to have some sort of self-control and be content. Being content with just regular life whatever that means to you, you know? Yeah, de definitely. So do you have, do you have like a morning routine that you do? Um, 
my morning routine changes seasonally. So if I'm not in school, if I, it depends on where I'm working at the time, because a, a lot of jobs I've had, some jobs I gotta wake up at 5.30 a.m. Some jobs I don't gotta wake up until 11. So it really depends on what I'm doing, but through all throughout the day, I know I'm a read. I don't know what time, I know I'm a read. I know I'm going to work out. I know I'm gonna cook. And I know I'm gonna look at some t type of monologue or something. And I know I'm gonna watch a, a educational lecture on on YouTube. I like to look at lectures, yeah. Uh, so um, who you be watching on YouTube? I watch a lot of people. It, it can vary. I can, I can watch Jordan Peterson. You know, he's a behavioral psychologist who teaches at the University of Toronto. Um, I can watch T.D. Jakes. Um, I can be watching, I can watch CNN. I can watch TED Talks. Um, I also like to, to um, watch this, uh, this is channel called J, JSC Criminology. And it's basically odd stories and psychological thriller type stuff. People doing crazy, crazy things. You know, I like it. It's a lot, man. Just a lot of educational stuff, or like psychological videos and how serial killers are wired, all that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, I'm about to say like, like you have a wide variety of interests. Yeah, I'm I'm really into behave, you know, behavioral psychology, clinical psychology. You know, that's really that really interests me. I probably would be a therapist if I wasn't doing this. <laughs> well, I Maybe. mean, right, yeah. I mean, right now, being an actor, that's, we're pretty much practicing to be therapists, uh, understanding how humans behave, like what drives us, like what's the primal needs, like that really helps drive out scenes and really connect with the text. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, that's definitely, that's definitely something big. Um, do you watch like Eric Thomas? Like those people, Eric Thomas. Who is that? All right, so Eric Thomas, that's ET, the hip hop preacher. Um, so you probably heard, when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. Like that video. That's I think cool. I heard that him say that before, but I haven't watched his um his videos in its entirety. I don't think so. Eric Thomas. Okay, I'm gonna check that out later. Yeah, I say that I've been following him like since high school. Like from when I was playing football, like that's that's what got me through the ups and the downs. Like listen to him, he has books, greatness is upon you, secret to success, average skill, phenomenal will. He also has a podcast. So like yeah, Eric Thomas, like he's I guess you could say he is my my coach. Like like my mind's my mindset coach when I'm feeling down or in mm -hmm. my mind, right? Cause he like he he like shocks, like he shocks, like most people just motivate you. Like, no, like he takes like two cable cords and <laughs> put that right in your chest, man. I, right, I'm ready to go now. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's interesting you say that because when you talk to different people, you start to figure out the type of motivational speakers and mentors people like to listen to. Like, for example, you like the guy Eric Thomas because he gives you a, he makes you more energized. Correct me if I'm wrong, but he puts a different motivation in your body. He exhilarates you a little bit to get yeah. you out, you know, and doing your thing. Versus me, I'm I'm I have more of a philosophical approach and like calm and peace and relax, so you can do what you need to do. You know, okay. and it's just amazing how people take, you know, f from different people for different things that's just interesting yeah def definitely so you read a lot of books um what is like what's the book you're currently reading um i don't read a lot of books but i'm i'm more into i'm more into like um articles like because i'm I, i'm a little scatterbrained I'll read a bunch of things at once, but I'll never finish it. 
but once I do, once I do, um, but once I do get really interested in something, I will finish it. But the last book I read that that I really learned from, I read the full thing was it's called Lao Tzu. Okay. My, my words are very easy to understand. Basically, just the you know, um, them talking about how how simplicity is important in the uh, the art of calmness and serenity and you know learning to be still and calm and using less of yourself to get more you know that kind of concept ying, ying versus yang you know and i think that keeps me very grounded and i'm in um i think one of my mentors you know unknowingly was teaching me this kind of stuff this guy at my school, his name is Paul. I talk to him like every day after school. Every, every after class, I'm gonna speak to him. And he he's more of a, you know, he practices Hindu and all that kind of stuff. He was a monk for like seven years. He tells me all that kind of stuff. And, you know, just the, the concept of loving just, being okay with whatever happens, good or bad, you know? And I think I carry that with me wherever I go. And it, it keeps me very, very grounded. So, you know, I would say that's a real important book to me that I read, you know? Okay, yeah, yeah, that's, um, yeah, that, that's what's up. Like, just being grounded and just being okay with the results no matter what good or bad that's, that's something i've learned from this book um called the power of now it's by edgar toller and mm -hmm. and he says like all we have is now so whatever happens you just accept it whether it's good or bad yeah so yeah that's 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 big and the whole giving less effort to to receive more that that's something i've learned a lot it's um from this principle called the Pareto principle which is 80 percent results comes from 20 percent effort yeah 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 i heard you were um when i was watching some of my uh, classmates interview you and him sam brandano you was talking about that i found that a little interesting you know yeah it works for you i assume yeah 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 definitely like like 80 80 20 has made it very specific and simplified at least at least for me because like I'm, I'm a little scatterbrained too like i'll be all over the place but once i start finding like yo what is the 20 percent that's going to give me the most results that's when things start going from a light machine gun to then a sniper mm -hmm. that's a good analogy Right, yeah, because yeah. anyone can spray a, a, an LMG, but only on like the real skilled, like focused people know how to operate a sniper nice. Mm hmm yep. That's very correct. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so important. Everybody needs to have something that works for them. Make sure it's extremely efficient. And yeah, I feel like we all need just something to, fall back on like a foundation to keep everybody you know and especially artists what we do like same you know yeah because we can we can get distracted easily and you know getting ahead a little bit you know so it's important to have those things to fall back on yeah yeah def definitely and going, going back to what i was saying before with unplugging um like if you let's say you wake up and instead of grabbing this and just scrolling through social media and med meditate and just be like, you feel way, way, way better than scrolling through social media and you end up having a better, better start to your day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just, and it's less expectations for yourself that are kind of unrealistic. You know, you, you're waking up and you're looking at these people putting themselves on a platform, you know, you don't know how true it is. You don't, 
you don't know what's going on and then you feel like you're behind and you may feel like you're doing something wrong and then that messes your whole psyche up you know and then you're messed up for the rest of the day mm-hmm. so yeah i agree with everything you're saying definitely right right and from one from what i've noticed like the first 10 minutes when you wake up and then the last 10 minutes before you go to sleep those are the two prime times when you are very susceptible to your surroundings or whatever you consume mm-hmm. but so yeah like routine like the morning routine and then how you end the day very very important now now i see you you have a bunch of stuff going on right now how do you balance you know the scheduling and making sure you have you know some good content and questions for your guests how do you how do you juggle that on a day-to-day basis so so on a day-to-day basis i have a whole process which is actually like behind me right now. So I get up at six in the morning. First thing I'm doing is um, visualizing. Like I'm visualizing my goals. Like I write, like I have a little black book. I, yeah, I got, I got a little black book here and I write down my six goals and which I'll even share them right now. My six goals, I am the supporting role in John Wick 4. I am the lead actor in my assassin film franchise. I earn a hundred million dollars a month. I perform in World of Dance every year. I own a home in LA and New York. I am the biggest movie star in the world. Mm. I write that down. I visual then I visualize what it tastes like, what it what it feels like. Then from there I, I meditate. Like I just I just sit there and meditate. I ask I ask my higher self questions like the, the last two years, I've, I've become more in tune with myself, not only as like from my physical realm, but also my spiritual realm. And whatever insight I get from there, I'll write it in this journal. Yeah, I, I got like 50 journals for like mm-hmm. something different. And so that's the morning. Then from there, what I will do is. I'll work out or well, lately what I've been doing since I'm up at 6, 7 a.m., I'll, I'll really go out in the middle of the street and I'll start dancing. Like that's how I'll be practicing. Yeah, I was going to ask you, you, da- you dance dance. Yeah, yeah, I dance dance. I, I does yeah. dance. <laughs> There's two, two of them. You dance dance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, di- it's a difference. Yeah, dance yeah. And then you dance, dance. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, I dance. I, like, I will go in the dead center of the streets and dance, dance, because nobody's outside. Yep. It's quarantine. So it's like, you know what? I'm about to mark, I'm about to make COVID my servant. Mm-hmm. And, and so once, then, so once I do that, get back to the crib, you know, shower, do a business training, I'll do script work. And pretty much, I'll just start making calls, making sales calls, following up with people, reaching out. So that's about what 10, 10 a.m. All right, and then <laughs> yeah, I know. I said it's it's right right up there too. Mm-hmm. And then I said like I do intermittent fasting, so like I don't eat until eleven a.m. to seven p.m. So I said I'm up. Five hours prior, I'm I'm just operating like a machine. Boom, boom, boom. Then it's that break where I just feast. Then after that, most of the time I will train with Alexander. We'll we'll look up a script. We'll look up like commercial script. Break that down. And that's the morning routine. Now the middle. Now the middle, like after that, from the afternoon till evening. That it all depends whether it's doing this doing this episode here, doing an IG live or acting class or just networking. And then the other evening, that's when I wind down, put on Netflix. Most now what I'll be watching, I'll be, I'll be switching between Naruto 
Avatar, Riverdale, you know, just, just studying, you know, just, just studying these characters into the Badlands. You know what I'm saying? Because I want to be in these action films, so I got I You got like it. action movies? Yeah, a lot. Yeah, you actually, okay. That's what's up. Yes, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the goal, man. I want, I, want to be, I want to be that next action film star. Now, now what's, your, what's your favorite action film? My favorite action film? Of all time. Of all time. Favorite action film of all time. You know what? I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say The Matrix. Oh, the first one? The first joint, yeah. Okay, yeah, the first one was, the first one was hot, yeah, for sure, okay. I'm not mad at that. Cause I tried to watch the second one. I didn't like the second one. Matrix Reloaded. Ugh. Like you know, like no, nah, I didn't like the second one. The first one was crazy though. I'll say that. Yeah, but in the, like the third one was actually pretty crazy as well. Okay. Yeah. So if, if you haven't watched the third one, I would say check that out. But yeah, like yeah, I think the Matrix is definitely my favorite action film. Mm -hmm. Now my franchise favorite one. That bad boy right in the middle, John Wick. John Wick, yeah. <laughs> that's it. I said that's that's the goal right there. Appear on John Wick. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, see, I got the I got the medallion, got the marker that was actually in the film. Got it from Walmart. So like, I see it. I said, I see. I got to feel. It, I got to touch it. I taste it. Like, uh, like, like this. This is how. This this is what I do every single day. Like, yeah. I, go, I go I go to sleep. I go to sleep with this. So. Like I said, when you go before you go to sleep and when you wake up is the prime time to program your, your subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so that's what I'd be doing. And oh yeah, back back to the eating routine. What I will do is I will plan out the four main things I have to complete, and I'll write that down in a post-it, which is actually like here. So I said for today I have audition, live with Samuel, write out 2.0 talk script and finance training, four things. So my acting, my acting career, my business, my content creation, and then my money. So the four, the four pillars that we all need to do, mm -hmm. especially as artists. Yeah. You know, I write, you know, I write down my six goals one more time. And I go to sleep. You got to figure it out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I definitely, yeah, quarantine has really forced me to re reinvent my entire routine. Mm. And you really have no choice, right? <laughs> <laughs> That is also true. Yeah, you really got no choice. It's it not 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 being sarcastic, but it, it is is really real because you have so much time to to just sit and say, "Oh, okay, what is next? What what is next? How can how can I use my time more efficiently?" And nothing's going on right now, so use it to your advantage. Use this time to your advantage because we're not going to get this back. Cause it's never going to be the same after this, you know? No. Yeah. Absolutely not. Yo, it's crazy. I remember back in October, I was saying 2020 is already a classic. And here we are in like the end of May. We, we ain't never going to forget 2020. That's going down in history for sure. <laughs> we, we never get, we never get this. And I always said it's going to be a classic, but I would never imagine we be quarantined in the crib for three months. Yeah. I still can't believe it, man. And now, broad, now that Broadway is canceled until January, it's, a, it's, much, it's much realer now. It's like, oh, wow. Okay, they're serious. Okay. You know? So... I'm interested to see how how the film industry is gonna, you know, take this hit and how things will change after 
after all this and how, you know, virtual auditions are cool, but, you know, it's nothing like going into the, uh, into the room and looking in the eyes of the people, you know? Yeah, that that's true. Like, I got word that what they will do is for, like, callbacks and chemistry reads, it'll be in person. But other than that, it's going to be all virtual. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I ain't gonna hold you. I'm I'm cool with that because I rather I rather do a audition online, come on the crib, and then go to a callback when there's like what ten ten people, ten five people, mm -hmm. instead of auditions where there's like fifty people, and you trying to find space, trying to you know get yourself right. Yeah, yeah, it definitely changed changed the landscape of everything. And hopefully for the better, hopefully for the better, you know, you got to think of the safety of people and, you know, make sure everybody's doing okay. And, you know, to actually keep things going, you have to make adjustments. So, you know, I respect what, what's going on right now, you know, just being ready for, for anything. That's the most important thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like commercials, like they, it's still, producing stuff but now it's all like self self-produced like i know i know people who've been getting like cameras and everything shipped to the crib for them to film it and once they film it they ship everything back to the production company <laughs> whatever worked for you that's funny yeah yeah that's what i'm saying it's like yeah com commercials and voiceover has been booming even through this whole pandemic and now it's just tv film where how they're going to proceed from there. Word is, there's going to be some guidelines for the lease in the next week. So we'll, we'll some, see what happens. Some, some what? Guide, Sorry. Guidelines, my bad. Yeah, like guidelines on how to uh, immediately okay. open. Got you, got you. Oh, man. And then they talking about, I know you uh, we was talking about basketball before. Yeah. About them, um, they started, I think, they're about to start the season back up soon, with no, uh, with no um, crowd, with no crowd. Yeah. How you feel about that? Playing, having basketball games with no crowd. In all honesty, that's like playing. That's like playing in the playground. If you think about it. Yeah, it's a pickup game. Yeah, pretty, yeah, literally a pickup game. With cameras around, <laughs> and I hate it. It's no, and if whoever wins the championship, it don't count. I already said this. <laughs> well, why? Cause, cause you, cause you take the crowd out. Now it don't count. Yeah, because it's the pressure of thousands of people in the building. It's the pressure of the noise. It, it, it it's the pressure of the criticism. People yelling. People shooting free throws and waving. You know, it's just just the the environment gives it an extra extra something, you know, and that's where greatness happens. You know, like you can't you, you then if, if that's going to happen, it's some people in New York who should be playing. Like you know what I mean? Outside, it's some it's some ballers everywhere, but everybody can't perform with the lights on. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I, I understand that, but but me, I personally, I feel like just being in in the arena itself, it's like, yo, I'm in the NBA arena, playing with the big boys, and there's cameras around. Yo, this is crazy. <laughs> all right, all right, yo, I got, I got, I got, I got to get right, I got to get right. All right, let's go, let's go. Yeah, I got this. So like I said crowd or no crowd, just that that being alone. And there's cameras around, and you and you have to guard LeBron. Like <laughs> crowd, crowd or no crowd, that's pressure either way. For sure, definitely. Yeah, it's just the playoffs. Like when it gets to there, it's gonna be real. It's uh, I don't. I'm going to watch it regardless, but I'm gonna feel some. I'm gonna feel some type of way, definitely. Well, I mean. I'll tell you, I'll tell you right now, like everything's being moved virtual. Like there's, there's virtual concerts going on right now, which I think is dope. Like, yo, Tory Lanez do a quarantine concert. 
Really? Yeah, yeah, bro. He had he had that joint on YouTube Live. Um, he had like the comments so people could request joints. People were donating. Like he usually usually shouting out everybody on there. Like, and yeah, he threw yeah that, that performance was fire. So that's cool. Dang. Now I know they've been doing the verses. You know, like the Jill Scott and Erica Badu and yeah, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I have some requests for that and. It's just interesting how people have been using the virtual to still make their fans happy, and I appreciate that. People aren't taking a day off, and people who really love the music have found a way to still produce and still reach out, which I think is significant, you know, especially as a musician. Because you can easily just be like, oh, oh, this is my free time. I can just chill. And they're like, nah, people, people miss you, and people want to hear what you got to say. And, they want to listen to your music and not through the CD and on iTunes. They want to see your face, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Most definitely. Like despite, despite us being separated, we can still connect and uplift one another. Mm. And that's the beauty. That's yeah. That is the beauty of technology. As much as we throw dirt on it, that that's the beauty of it. We, we could, we connect to people like from all over the world. Like look at us right now. I'm in, I'm in Queens. You, where you at right now? I'm in Brooklyn. Brooklyn? Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, so it's not much of a trip, but, but still, no, we can't, we can't really go outside right now. Yeah. Yes. It's kind of weird, like, just looking around. And I was in Manhattan yesterday. I went to my, to my old job and uh, got some food. And just looking around, and I, I used to work in the East Village. You know the East Village is yep. always building. It's St. Mark's, empty. Second, First Avenue, empty. Avenue A, empty. Like, everything is empty. And it, and it can mess you up visually. You're just like, oh, this don't look right. This kind of looks like <laughs> like it's approaching I Am Legend status. Like, yeah, I was just about to say, <laughs> my, yo, it look like I Am Legend. <laughs> yeah, that's how it feels. And you don't know how to take it. You're like, oh, OK. But. I think stuff is starting to open back up. I know in Delaware, they're starting to do like a certain capacity of people to go to restaurants and stuff. So that's good news. But I think New York and like Philadelphia and LA, the big, you know, major cities, it's yeah. going to take a while to come back. Yeah. And like I have a couple of people in like upstate New York, they're starting to reopen. Like they passed all the qualifications. So they're in, well, what, the second second phase right now. Now, yes, in New York City, that's that, that's going to take a while, just because we're we're in a grid, and there's so many people where it's like, you gotta take extra extra precautions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and I ain't gonna lie, I'm enjoying this time, not <laughs> not <laughs> just really doing what I want. You know, it's it's a good it's a good time. And I think, I hope, I, I really hope that people come out of this with something. It doesn't have to be physical. I ain't, you know, people are saying, oh, well, if you don't learn nothing, you slacking. Well, maybe that's not it. Maybe some people just need this time to relax and just get their mind right. People got kids and stuff and families, you know, it's maybe they don't need to be doing that. Maybe they just need the, a time to regroup. So. I, I, absolutely, I said we never, ever, ever get in this back. So it's like that. That's that's how I started. Not I'm starting getting up at six a.m. Like I'm, I'm a really, I'm a really get myself right. So when the floodgates open, I'm already fifty steps ahead of everyone else. I just sat back. Mm -hmm. no, no, you're doing it right, man. I respect. I respect what you're doing. It's good to see it. You know, somebody. Is really focused and you know on their stuff, so it's definitely admirable. Yeah, pre appreciate that, man. You know, gotta operate like John Wick: focus, commitment, sheer will. Yeah, man. Now hold on, hold on. I gotta say this. I have to say this before I forget. <laughs> What's up? All right, you know, give me. I need you to break it down for me: John Wick or Blade. John Wick or Blade? Yo, that's... 
Wow. Okay. So, so what are you saying is like who are winning a battle or who, who like the baddest one? Well, who, what are you, you have to give up one. Which one are you keeping? Damn, I gotta give up one. Dude, you gotta give up, give up one series. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. You know what, man? All markers must be honored. Ah. I'm keeping John Wick. You keeping John Wick? Okay. <laughs> I'm not mad at that. I always been a Blade fan. I, I like Blade, man. I like Blade. But John Wick is John Wick is fire. I like John Wick. Yeah, yeah. I say yeah. I, I like I like Blade. I like Blade as well. But I said if I, if I gotta keep one of them. Yeah, yeah. I got I gotta keep I gotta keep the one thing that's that I see every day. Yeah, I respect that. He, he's he's definitely he's he's become an iconic figure in the in the movie world. He'll never be forgotten. Not ever. And and because he's become an iconic, I'm seeing him every day. Where so if Blade has to be get rid of, guess what? I'm I'm gonna fill those shoes. Ooh. Black. Oh, 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 Blade. You gonna get the you gonna get the cut with the the? They gonna do your hair and all that? I, I actually had I actually had that cut, but I'm I'm talking about like like black assassin, yeah, like, yeah, like I'm feeling those shoes. Yeah. Period. <laughs> you hold on, hold on. But bro, you know it's funny. What weren't they trying to redo uh Blade with Mahershala Ali? Yeah, yeah, they announced it like I don't know they what's happening. It? You say you don't know what's happening? Yeah, I don't know what's happening. I just saw the announcement and we haven't heard nothing ever since. Uh yes. Cause that would be interesting, but you would I'm I'm rooting for you, bro. You better you better get your cape. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need no cape <laughs> <laughs> with the sunglasses and all that. I say I I got the sunglasses. I got the shades. I got I got my hoodie. I said, that's why I have Assassin's Creed up there as well. Actually, I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give y'all I'm gonna give y'all a closer look, right? So Assassin's Creed. This is Black Flag. Black Flag. This is the Black Assassin in the video game Assassin's Creed. Yeah, you know I mean, so that that's the visual representation of what I'm after. Okay. Change, change. That, that's your own joint that you're trying to start, right? Yeah, my own my own joint. Yeah. And what's that called? Oh, uh, so that so that okay, that was Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Well, that one's Freedom Cry. Assassin's Creed Freedom Cry. It's the it's a downloadable content on Xbox and PlayStation. What about the one you're trying to create? You, 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 um, the one you uh, wanted to do, or or is it too early? The one I'm trying to create, like that's so. What I'm talking about, that's down the line. Right now, I'm just building the foundation. Right now, got you. Got you. Now, do you write, Tosh? I write. I write like skits. I write. Yeah, not, none of like films or anything. I'm not. I've not done that. Okay. Yeah, I think once you catch the uh, the acting bug, you know, soon after, even, even whether it's people close to you or in the industry, yeah, I think naturally you start to get a writing bug as well. You just kind of get a little little curious, you know. Yeah. And I was asking because you uh, you seem very passionate and active, so. I would think that that's something you would uh you would have you know kind of thought about. I yeah I am not not thought about that. I've thought about being coming an executive producer, so I oversee everything. Okay. Yeah, because yeah yeah that's that's like that's what real wave is like. The A list are doing that. Michael B doing that. Will Smith doing that. Yeah. So I was like, all right, so. Brad Pitt too, right? He is that yeah, 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 him. yeah, him too. So, so it's like, yeah. yo, if I don't get, if I don't don't get many roles down the line, if I'm executive producing, I'm good. Yeah, have your foot foot in the foot in it in some way. In a, in a yeah, 
So you can make a huge contribution to something. Yeah, know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. My Batman, you don't see me, but you know I'm there. Of course. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah, man. So what you got planned the rest of the day, man? Rest, rest of the day. Well, I got I got an audition in an hour, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some business training with Grant Cardone. Yeah, Cardone University. Like I said, this this whole quarantine thing, I've been taking the time to really develop my business mindsets. Cause that is definitely definitely very important for all artists out there. Hollywood is a business so if you're just focusing on the creative side and now on the business side it's clipped yeah you should definitely have a video at some point i don't know if you have already but about that specifically i think that would help a lot of your you know fans and people who watch your stuff yeah oh yeah i'll definitely yeah i'll definitely do that down the line of that yeah like the 2.0 talks i mentioned earlier like that's me just throwing out gems in my own motivational way. I will definitely throw that in there at some point. Yeah. So during during this time, you know, because um I don't know when pilot season is uh I think what's that, February? January? Yeah, yeah, it was like like February. Yeah, the next one. I think people, you know, would benefit from those jewels, you know, getting more, you know, down to the core of the business side of um of the industry especially the new people um and i've been fortunate enough to have people talk to me about it you know in school outside of school and stuff like that so i think people would definitely benefit from that you know yeah most definitely so i've been at this for three years and the first two years i was looking like a chinese fire drill all over oh the elaborate <laughs> yo, 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 that that term Chinese fire drill, like the first time I heard that, son, this was like after a football game when I was eleven years old. Like, like, like us defensively, we we was running everywhere, not I said not stopping the running backs. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so he, he was funny. like, y'all out there looking like a Chinese fire drill. <laughs> and, That's funny. And, and I did crack up. It was like, it's not funny. How many times we told y'all, don't over pursue. And look what's happening. But, oh, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, so so really, yeah, I was, I was all over the place with my yeah. head cut off. And now... I said third year in, like I'm I've been running into people who know about the business and have taken me under my wing, which I'm very fortunate to have met them. One of them being Valerie Hubbard. Val I I appreciate that woman so much. I met her, yeah, I met her last summer in a class about the business of acting. And just from her vibe, I'm like, yo. That's that's my mentor right there, cause she, yo, bro, she is. How how can I say this? Um, she's like the Malcolm X of the business of acting. She's like, by any means necessary, we break mm -hmm. we breaking rules or the rules you've been told as an actor, we breaking them. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I've done from summertime up till now. Mm. Just studying and getting some jewels and gems. Yeah, yo, getting some yeah. jewels, getting some gems, like finding out what shows, what projects I want to be in, and just get the drop on the buyers. Yeah. Buyers being the writers, producers, directors, cast even casting directors too. You know, just learn who they are. You know, just get getting just being in their face. Yeah. Yeah. For like people, all right, for those who are watching. And if you are new or you are in the industry right now, you, you gotta you gotta pull up to these people like like a colleague, like yo, love what you do. I'm Mark your Alley. This is me. This is my brand. Just want to get my face out there to you. 
And from there, you just continually follow up. Anything you got going on, anything you see that they got going on. And I said, going back to, going back to John Wick, uh, when, you, when you are an enemy of John Wick, he gets the full drop on you. Where you stay at, what's your go-to spot, your strengths and weaknesses, any news yep. that's going on, he knows about it. That's how you got to operate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very important. Super important. Just do, doing your, your, you know, your, your research on the stuff you care about and making sure when you show up, you know, you're able to, you're able to, um, you know, recite the stuff and, you know, I wouldn't say impress them, but show them that you've done your homework and, that, and they respect you at that point, yeah. you know, and you look different than the, 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 um, the typical person coming into the room because I don't think most people do that. So when you do do it, you just stand out that much, you know, more. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I said like, Everybody want to make it. Everybody wants to be an actor. A lot of people, some have it for the wrong reason. Some do it for fame, money, whatever. I do it because I want to empower people through the characters that I portray. And so I want, I want people to become more bold in their own lives. Because I don't know, I don't know if you feel this way, but I feel like movies speak to us like a personal therapist. I'll, I'll, I'll comment when you're done. When you're done. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so if, I, if I movies speak to us like a personal therapist, like, like certain characters, certain, certain movies, you just be like, yo, I really, I really vibe with that. Cause like, yo, I'm going, I'm going through that right now. Like I've, I've caught myself having those moments time and time again. And yeah, the first eight years of my life, I was the only child. So I turned to TV and cartoons because like, yo, I was an outcast in school. Yeah. Yeah, yo, to, <clears throat> to comment a little bit more about that, what I've noticed in just life, for some reason, there's something about seeing a representation of someone similar to you or somebody you look up to that you put on a pedestal that you may see on film or on stage that you're more you're more you, you're more open to their to their message versus somebody who's sitting right next to you you know yeah for some for some odd reason I don't I don't know what it is or you know this person is equal to me so maybe they don't you know, have anything to tell me because, you know, they're in the same position I am. But no, it's this, it's this guy, like on my wall, I got Bruce Lee. Like this dude will whoop anybody's ass, no matter who it is, yeah. you know? And he was the most, he was the nicest guy ever. And he never did anything out of, you know, maliciously. He never beat anybody up. He wasn't a bully. But if you treat him with disrespect, it's over for you, you know? And it's something you learn from that right there, you know, how to defend yourself and, you know, how to treat people. And if you're not treated that way, and what you get, you know, you know, what consequences you have to pay, you know? Yeah. That's what everything, any, you know, our, our, um, any expression or form of art, that, that, ha that happens, I think and you take from it, whatever you want to take from it. So that's what I always appreciated about, about the art or whatever it is, you know? Yeah, yeah like yeah, art, art really teaches us a lot more than academics do. And, and the fact that arts often gets downplayed that's that's a detriment. That's also saying something about society. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we people don't want well the baby boomers, you know, speaking more specifically. I don't think they want us to be free. They want to live a life where you know everybody's kind of you know going through this monotonous way of you know being and you know 
people want to all look the same and that's not you know how people are everybody's different and for some reason that people can't get that through their head everybody lives their life a different way and you know they do what they want and you have to be behind that I mean, you can't have change if everybody's thinking the same way you know whether you agree with it or not you know it's freedom of speech you know um and that's where all this stuff comes from what you look up to you know john wick keanu reeves didn't get to where he was by being a normal guy you know he took that risk and look where he is and that's how you know he influenced you in a way you know yeah and going back to the whole like mass thinking like yo this line from the matrix morpheus said i will never ever forget because it is so true mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. people in the matrix have relied so long on a system blindly that they will do anything necessary to defend it yep and that's what makes that movie so good and it's timeless it's a timeless message it's going on as we speak as we speak like we are living in the matrix right now yeah yeah so significant and you know i think people are waking up bro i, I really do you know even if it's you know by a hair i don't mind that at least it's something yeah yeah well definitely like you know? it, yeah it's, it's good to see like other people are seeing what we've been seeing for a while what we would call crazy. Mm hmm And you know that that's hard to swallow sometimes. You know, you said you were the outcast growing up. It's hard to swallow, but as you get older, you become a little more comfortable with yourself and you know, accepting of other people's negative, you know, opinions and criticism and stuff like that. But you know, you just learn to accept it. And when yeah. when people grow and they learn that they were tripping, <laughs> and, and you, and you were normal by being different, you know? That's normal to me. Yeah, uh, yeah, most most definitely. Like, yeah, high, high school was the same thing. And I just, I just had conversations with a few people from my high school, like, last week. And they were telling me, like, yo, it was never you. It was the school we was in and the people you you were around. Like, yeah, you, you were unique. And I feel like a lot, a lot of people just wanted to bring you down because they saw something in you that they didn't have. And for me to hear that, it's like, so for the past 10 years, that's all been in my mind. Like, I, like, last, like last 10 years, I felt like, yo, something, something's wrong with me. I've been, I've been an outcast, been isolated. I don't feel at home, but it was never me. Yeah. And maybe you had to go through that, you know? I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm just spitballing here, but you know, it kind of made you stronger. You think if that wouldn't have happened, you would be the person you are today? Um, yeah, come to think of it. I don't, yeah, no, I don't think so. Mm. Yeah, yeah, come think of it. Yeah, I don't think so. Because from being used to being a lone wolf, I'm become self reliant and I've now become very obs observant of other people, like how they move, what they're thinking. Like, like I, could, I could sit down and I could study somebody for six months and know everything about them. And you, and you have no idea I know this because. I'm just in the cut, chilling. Yep. But, but the minute you cross me, it's done. Mm -hmm. And before you before you know it, before you know what even happened, I'm already out of the picture. Yeah. Like John Wick. <laughs> yeah. Can, I, Everything I, related I, to John Wick. I know it's crazy. We keep going. We keep going back to John Wick, but but it's so true. I said Bruce Lee and all these people is so true. Like they are they are observant of everybody. And the minute you cross them, that's it. It's game over. They they got the full drop on you before you know it. You sleeping with SpongeBob, 
in Bikini Bottom. Yeah. Yeah, man, I think you hit it on the nose, man. It's, it's a hard, and, you know, that going into, and I think more people experience it than, than, than we, than we think. I think, you know, that's where the uh, depression and the mental, mental, um, mental illness and all that kind of stuff, you know, coming in because people don't have a, have a outlet, you know, to, to uh, release or someone to talk to them. That's important. You know, that's where mentors come in, especially for young black men, you know, we don't have that. And, and when that, that's not present, the numbers go up and society, you know, takes a hit from it. Ab absolutely. A lot of it too has to do with social media. P yeah, social, social media has something to do with it as well. And just, yeah, like the pressure that people face today, like uh, young black people, like millennials, the whole generation Z, like we're, call, we're crying out for help, but we're being ignored, being crucified and criticized, then that has to stop. Yeah, really, definitely. But how, how, what, well, I'm not, maybe this is a rhetorical question, but how does that stop? Do we, do we need better leaders? Do we need more leaders? Do, do we need better education, different, different classes that are being taught in these schools, you know? versus um you know stuff that we don't need at the age of 16 because when you're young that's when your brain's developing and you know you're 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 developing all these idiosyncrasies and personality characteristics yeah. that we're going to carry for the rest of our lives so what is important for uh, for us you know for the young kids to so when they grow older you know they can be in that better position and then they teach it to the next generation just questions you know we have to figure that out sooner sooner or later i feel like it's, it's a combination of a lot definitely well first and foremost the education system that has to be changed like why are they not teaching meditation why they're not teaching how to control your emotions why are we're not learning financial literacy in high school like 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 real stuff that we can apply. Yeah. How, oh yeah, networking, like how, how to network, how to communicate, you know, how to, how to pitch yourself. Like that's, that's one, that's one thing. Because like, I ain't gonna hold you dog. The last three years, I've learned way more out of college than I ever did while in school. Mm-hmm. I can attest to that. Definitely. So, so that's, that's saying something right there. And we're always being dogged at by our parents. Oh yeah, you know, you gotta go to school. You gotta, you know, you gotta have A's, you gotta get a degree, blah, blah, blah. Okay, what has that done? Mm -hmm. Student debt, um, struggling to find a job, feeling frustrated, feeling like I wasted four years, being resentful towards my parents for forcing me to go to school when yeah. I didn't learn anything. Like I've learned way more from all the books I've read from people I've met that I've been in school. So that's, so yeah, education, most definitely, that's one. Another thing, I would definitely say better and more leaders. Mm, yeah, yeah. For some reason, we just, there's, we have no one, or the kids have no one to look up to. When, when you're not able to think for yourself at that age or have the confidence to think for yourself, you need someone to to teach you when you're young so they can spark the the um idea of thinking for yourself once you get to that age where you come it's only a small percentage of kids that you know are special and you know they they get it early but not but everyone's not like that so where's that outlet for them you know yeah yeah exactly and i would definitely say I feel like I've gone through like all, all that bullshit through my life just so I could pass it down to my brother. Let's say he's in high school right now and he is pretty smart and he is ahead of his time. So now, so now I know that and he has me. So 
everything I'm learning, like like all the books, like things I've gone from books, I'm just I'm just passing that on to him. And I know he's he's not gonna get it now, but he'll he'll definitely get it like down the line, like even before I did. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's definitely a part of my journey is to help, you know, inspire the next generation. Yeah. And it's so important. It's so important. Yeah, because they are our future. So we need to take care of them. And by having more leaders, better leaders who will stand up and no call no call outs, call out the bullshit. Mm -hmm. That's yep. definitely important. And I want I wanna get too deep with it, but the whole George Floyd thing, now we got the riots and the marches. Yeah. Like that, see that right there, people band together and like literally stand and be like, yo, this has been going on for too long and y'all just sitting back watching, like, all right, now we busting the door open. Now, now what? Now you have to do something. What's up? Yeah. Yeah, it was gonna come, it was gonna come to a, to a point where, you know, people were just gonna, of the black community or, Wherever, whoever feels oppressed, and we're talking about, you know, black people in this situation right now, so I'm going to use black people as an example. You can only be pushed around for so long before you retaliate. The bully is not going to accept getting a fruit cup thrown at his head for, for so long, you know. He's going to snap one of these days. Um, and you don't know what's going to happen. And you don't know what could happen. And... I think that's what we're experiencing now. I don't know if you've been watching NBC, but all last night I'm watching it and I'm like, wow, this looks like something like from a different world. They're, like stuff is burning, they're, they're fighting cops. Like this is crazy. But at the same time, you're like, can you blame them? It's like, can you blame them? Wow. You know, it's two, two sides of the fence. So this, this has been, this is crazy. The whole looting, like, I'm not. I'm really not surprised. Like people, people want to go crazy over, but but it's like you open up a sleeping giant. What do you know is gonna happen? <laughs> you know, you yeah, know what I mean, like, like when you when you mess with Bruce Lee, what do you think is gonna happen? You're gonna get a roundhouse to the face. Yeah, yeah, it's real, and we're we're seeing it now and experiencing it now, and. And unless something, you know, action is taking place, it will only get worse, you know. So, I'm, I'm, I'm. I want to see what happens a couple weeks from now, or you know, a few months from now. See how all this, you know, develops. You know, where all this energy is placed. You know. Yeah, it's us. And as I said before. 2020 is already a classic. It's a new decade. Like we ain't never had anything like this before. So, <laughs> and and up to this point, none of this I ever imagined. So it's like it's only gonna get even more crazy. Yeah. Yep. Mm. But yeah, I I appreciate you for hopping on this episode, man. You know, great talk, chiming up with you. Yo, Tosh, this is always fun, man. I don't do this like that, you know. This is this is always fun. I don't I don't get to get my my thoughts and ideas out in a in a professional and you know uh, controlled setting. So I appreciate you doing this. This is love. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Most most definitely, man. Cause like right now, more than ever, we need people to spread positivity, spread gems to those who are feeling down in the trenches. So yeah. This, yeah, so this this is why I do this and also too for the black community. Like, yeah, we in this together. We all we got, we gotta stick together. You know what I mean? Definitely. Uh, thank you for that, man. For sure. Well, most definitely. But but yeah, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Tosh, like Tosh point oh, but I'm two point oh at Stay Up Networks with the GOAT, Samuel James Pygat. My man. Remember, stay up. Thank you, brother.